Shalom, who praises to Yahweh, Ba Shem, Yahweh, Shai, Ba Shem, Al Rakar, Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great Wilson who rule well. And Shalom to the whole four elect. This is by Allah. It's a response video to Elder Apostle Tar's video. Um, I can't record the title right now, but you will see it in the title, Lord willing. And, um, when she outlined two questions, Iraq, um, which um, um, plans to answer the first of the two, but, I'm, uh, but in doing so, I'm probably going to mention a latter question to prove the point of the first. So you're going to wind up getting an answer for everything, Lord willing, if, if, if this be edifying, you know, through the Spirit. Um... That's the other thing I was gonna do. Uh, so yeah, that's that's it, man. Oh, it's also a rebuttal, because only the reason why you said it was because Deacon Akar, <coughs> Sakari, basically said that um, the centurion in in Matthew the eighth chapter, you know, the Roman centurion, where he's he's, he's um his servant that was was ill. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> needed healing. Um, basically, he um, he said that he was an Edomite, all right. But um, you know, that ain't the truth, all right. So, like I said, I'm gonna answer the question that Apostle Tar had, which was basically, what nationality was the man, the centurion, and his servant, and, and also the nationality of the woman at the well. As my yeah. So um now I'm gonna start with this and I'm gonna move into Matthew eighth chapter. Uh it's Isaiah forty five and seventeen. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord's hour with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded. Well without end. <laughs> well without end. Alright. So it says Israel all right, Israel. Who is Israel today? Israel was the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They're the true Israelites of the Bible, and they're the ones that are in 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 dire need of salvation, of being saved. And they're going to be saved of who? Of in in the Lord Yahweh. All right, the Most High Power, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And not only is going to save them once, but once He saves them. They're going to be changed, all right, starting with the elect of the, of the children of Israel. They're going to be changed in a twinkle of an eye, which is basically going to set a standard going forth that there will be no need for um, any salvation again because that's they're going to be changed to where they will be immortal, all right, whereby meaning that them having no mortality means that they will be righteous and never go off. And which means inadvertently they would never uh, be in a situation ever again where they would need salvation, all right? So it's, that's why it's an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end, all right? So we ain't going to be ashamed nor confounded world without end. And the reason why is because we have this truth, all right? And only we're going to be that world without end. So, yeah, let's... Um, Let's move to this. So this is Matthew 8 and 5. All right, so let's go into it now. <clears throat> and when Yahweh Shai was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. All right, so it says, And when Yahweh Shai entered into Capernaum, so Yahweh Shai entered into Capernaum and came, into, uh, came unto the centurion beseeching him. All right, so the point being, uh, right, he came into that land and the, the centurion came unto him. Now, a centurion is a rank within the Roman Empire, all right, because during that time, through the succession of various rulership, uh, various kingdoms having dominion over the children of Israel due to us falling short of the glory of the Most High and normally fulfilling the prophecies of the Heavenly Father, 
uh, we were, you know, there was a changing of, of God and who had us as a vassal kingdom, all right, as subjects, as a proxy. <coughs> so, even true to all that, a proxy, a vassal, I'm also a proxy. Basically, during the time of the Greco-Roman Empire, this being a Roman part of it, but the Greco kind of set a tone. All right. Even really, you can go back as far to uh, Babylon because there was, a, there was a, you go and read um, the book of Esther, you go into certain words within the book of Esther, uh, the book of Daniel, all right. I believe in the Apocrypha as well. You have... You have um, a Syrian a Syrian form of Hebrew being spoke amongst our people due to what influence of the kingdom ruling at that time, All right? But let's focus on the point: Greco-Roman Empire. So you had the Greco-Roman Empire. They ruled during that time, and from the time of when Alexander the Great came, Alexander the Greek came into rulership, he basically started the Hellenization of our people, all right, whereby they took on the fashions of the heathen, all right, and, and a lot of, you had some that were so forward therein, they basically just, you know, they basically straight up became a heathen, having names like, which you, funny enough, you find today, Quavius and all that type of stuff, you know, Greek, Greek, Greekish names and Greekish customs. But now speed up to the time of the Roman Empire, him having so much influence over our over our people and over the whole landmass of uh, Mesopotamia. Basically, you had our people that adopted their customs and their ways. So that's why this individual here, this centurion, he's an Israelite, all right, that basically worked as the role of a centurion, all right? It was a job he did, okay? Now, even building upon that, you, you have it today, you have... Many of our people that work in armed forces all over the world, right, over in the UK, over in America, um, all over the gaff, all right? And you had, um, excuse me, and you have, um, oh, it's lucky I'm trying to record this point came to him as centurion. Oh, and now one of the things you have to understand that you had heathens that joined part of the Roman Empire, but they'll be known as auxiliaries, right? But then you had some that were born into what? Uh, citizenship of Rome. So they were, they were known as Romans and they could become centurions. A good example is the fact that <coughs> when Paul was beaten, and he basically said, like, this is not something to be done to a citizen of Rome. They basically, you know, were, were shook because they said, man, this is, he's a citizen of Rome. We can basically be sued. They thought he was just a heathen that didn't have that, that, um, that, um, that dignity, so to speak. All right. So that just shows you the point that it's not far fetched for an Israelite to be a centurion. All right. And furthermore, we're going to understand through the things that happen that this man indeed is a centurion. So it says, verse 6, and saying, Lord, my servant live at home sick of palsy, grievously tormented. All right? So he had a demon tormenting him. Verse 7, And Yahweh shall say unto him, I will come and heal him. All right? Now, this is, this is Yahweh Shai's attitude says everything in what's being said. All right, and this is where I have to actually, you know, draw that stark comparison with that of the the, the woman at the well to let it be known that, look, there's a difference. So this is the book of John 4, excuse me, 4, 15 and 16. It says, the woman saith unto him, sir, give me this water. What is this water that the Lord is speaking about? I'm going to have to read it. John 4 and 13. Yahweh shall answer and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I, will, that I shall give him shall never thirst. 
but the water that I shall give him shall, he, shall be in him a well of water springing up for everlasting life. Now, what is that water? That starts off with the gift, well, only is the gift of faith. To believe you have a shy can save, all right? Because if you have that, that basically allows you to have a relationship with our Bar Shem El Shai, whereby he sups with you and facilitates you, well, basically nourishes your, your spirit onto salvation, all right? So they will never thirst again because it will be a, a well of water springing up. Within your, your, your belly will, will basically be a well of water. It'll just be, keep pouring and pouring, all right? But, so getting back to the point now where I wanted to go, uh, verse 15, the woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I first not, neither come hither to draw. All right? <laughs> so he says, she was saying, look, give me this water because I don't want to be having to walk all the way down there, part of my daily duty, grabbing water just so I can have something to drink, wash, and all this type of stuff. Give it to me. Verse 16, Yahweh shall say unto her, go call thy husband and come hither. All right, so his answer was plainly, you know, it was it was really that was showing you. Yeah, I was shy it was just a master, a master of. I don't want to say mind games, but just mental man, All right? Because basically, oh me, as you read through all of this, he basically just tells her, I have to jump down to enough to build upon the point. All right. <laughs> To kind of solidify the point, this is the book of uh, what scripture am I getting? Yeah, twenty-two to twenty-four. So it says, "Ye worship, ye know not what <coughs> we know. What we worship, for salvation is of the Jews." All right. That's why he, def that's why he deflected her request of the water, you know, because he basically. It wasn't for her, all right? The fact they even out asked her, you know, to bring her husband, she said unto him, I don't have a husband. So that means in turn, what? She can't get it then, all right? And, and, and he even built upon that. He said, rightfully answered, because you have five. And it basically spoke to more of establishing Yahweh Shai being who he is. And she perceived well, all right, that he was a prophet. And then she ran off to tell, you know, and well, only got to this place, all right. Verse twenty-two: You worship, you know not what we know. What we worship for salvation is of the Jews, all right. For salvation pertains unto the Jews, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, all right. But only the whole nation of Israel, the Most High will save the tenth of Judah first, all right. So that no uh, tribe magnify boast himself, magnify themselves against him. Verse twenty-three. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Bang. He's seeking true worshippers, two followers, all right, to worship him. Verse 24. The Most High is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. So, in a verse, like I said, in a verse, you know, in a verse, <coughs> I'm gonna wind up answering a lot of questions for the point of establishing the, the the first question, which is that she is a heathen, all right? But this centurion, he truly indeed is a Jake. So again, let's jump back to this point, Matthew eight and six, and saying, Lord, my servant life at home sick, palsy, grievously tormented, all right? And Yahweh shall say unto him, I will come and heal him. Very simply, all right? He was there to aid, to work with this man. Why? Because he was an Israelite. Because salvation had come unto him, all right? Just like another centurion, all right? And who am I talking about? Actually, I'm, I've got to double check. Because <laughs> I'm thinking about Cornelius, but it could be another. I'm thinking of Paul saying these words. <coughs> so let me just check it very quickly.
Uh huh. So okay, I was good. So yeah, as Peter said, man, unto Cornelius, all right, ye in your house shall be saved. This day of salvation come unto your, unto your um your house, all right. So it's the Lord having mercy upon this man, all right. Which even let me just build upon that. I got a couple of precepts to build upon that point. So it's the book of Matthew five and seven. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain obtain mercy. Alright? So the merciful are blessed. Alright? Who are the ones that are be that are merciful? It would only be the children of Israel because all of these words that the Lord was saying, blessed, blessed are they, blessed are this, blessed that. They all pertain to the children of Israel, the kingdom of the Heavenly Father. So when he said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, alright, he was speaking to the children of Israel. And what what did this centurion obtain? Mercy, all right? Why? Because in turn, he was merciful, and he's going to go on to speak about it. But I just want to run down these precepts to build upon that point. It's the book of Isaiah 14 and 1 and 2. For the Lord Jehovah will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel, all right? So that's all he's going to have mercy. We see it with the woman of the well. He didn't have mercy on her. He let her have it, all right? But then with the centurion, he made a request of the Lord and he made a supplication to for his... He, he basically fulfilled his request immediately. All right? Um, and <clears throat> we yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers will be joined with them and they shall cleave the, to the house of Jacob and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord Jehovah. For the servants and handmaids. Alright? So I read again. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord Yahweh for servants and handmaids. Talking about the heathen nations. Like that woman in the well. Alright? She will be a possession unto the children of Israel. Alright? In some, you know, facet, some shape or form. And they shall take their captives who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Yeah, because that woman, the only reason why she was there is because when we was capt captive um, to <coughs> the Babylonians, they brought even into the land, which learned of the customs and wind up being, you know, the Samarit Samaritans that kept the customs of our forefathers. And even to the point where they even believed that they were part of the chosen of the Lord. All right. Let me read this, James. And then I'll go back to where I was at. What am I doing? So there's a book of James 2 and 12 and 13. So speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. All right? So remember, you know, whatever you do, you know, keep the law of liberty in your mind because you're going to be judged according to it. That's where that mercy comes into play. All right? Verse 13, For he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy, and mercy will rejoice against judgment. All right? And you see that, well, there was a judgment on you know, a, a, a wicked, you know, um, a palsy on his servant, all right? But the mercy rejoiced against that judgment, all right? But when you deal with Esau, all right, who Hakar's trying to say this individual is, all right, a centurion, he, he, don't, he, call, he can't receive no mercy, all right? Because he don't show, he don't know how to show mercy. He's just a, an habitual, habitual line stepper. All right, line crosser. However, is it Dave Chappelle said it? However, he said it in a skit. This man knows no bounds when it comes to wickedness. He, he doesn't say, you know what, man? Let me just chill out. I'm thinking of the movie Limitless uh, with um, Bradley Cooper. When he was saying, you know, why don't we think, you know, is anyone thinking that, you know, maybe we shouldn't invade Russia in the winter or wherever he said. Maybe we should just enjoy our cocktails and, and sit on the beach. But then Esau don't think like that. The way Esau thinks, he thinks, how can I... What? What? It tells you all throughout the scriptures. He can't sleep unless he does wickedness, man. 
all right? He's thinking about new ways to reinvent the will of wickedness, all right? <clears throat> so, jumping back to the point, the book of Matthew. Hey. Okay. Eight and eight. Oh. Yeah, eight and eight. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. All right? So this is what the centurion said in reply, in response to Yahushai, saying, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy. He said, out of one. Man, Esau ain't calling him Lord. He ain't giving him no form of superiority. Esau's the type of, remember it says the wicked are strayed when they cut out of the womb. And the, a good, I mean, they're meant to be Jake's. So I won't even use that as an example because, you know, but basically, you see Esau, um, he basically, um, you know, you have the children, they'll be called, they don't call their dad, dad, they'll be calling them by their first name. They'll be showing great levels of disrespect. They don't have that kind of, um, you know, even there's always like comedy skits. I'm trying to remember who I saw where they say like, yo, your mum can't talk to you. Or oh, Avery Spears or Spears, I saw it the other day. And it says, you know, the white, white friend told him, you know, your, your mum can't talk to you like that. She gotta get, she's got to give you your space, man. You know, that's how they are, all right? But this centurion, what did he do? He said, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Now, come on, man. <laughs> Yo, a man said, you ain't going to come under my house. Just say it, and then I know it's done. You know how, how, how high power that is? That's crazy, man. All right? That's a level of faith that's just like, Yo, all I know, all you got to do is say the word, and I know it's done. And the build up, and it goes on to say, verse 9, For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. <clears throat> so, him being a centurion, being over men, he understands how power works. And he understood that Yahweh Shai had authority. He, he had authority in a physical sense, in a third dimensional kind of sense. But he understood that the Lord had the power in a spiritual sense. That's why he even came onto him in the first place, in the fourth dimension, that that demon that was on his, his servant, all he had to say was, demon be gone, and that's it. All right? Because he had the authority to do so. The level of faith you have to have to look at him is just say, that's the Lord, man. I know if I ask that. That's deep, man. All right? And this is why the Lord said this, verse 10, when Yahushua heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. All right? So he said, this man had the greatest faith in Israel. Now, <laughs> on that point, you know, the video's done. I ain't going to say nothing else. All right? Because we're talking, first off, he said, no, not in Israel. So that means he pretend, he's within the nation of Israel, straight up. That's what he's saying. You can check different versions. It more or less, is, not more or less, it says that. All right, that no one has faith like him in Israel. All right, that just lets you know he's an Israelite, kind of in in a sense. All right, but it says, "Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith." All right, he hasn't found great. Let's, what, what is faith? All right, we gotta build upon that, because Deacon Akar. I mean, I ain't gonna get all like. They call you names or nothing like that. I'm not trying to belittle you. I'm I'm just kind of getting roused up, you know. But I'm not I'm not doing it to be like belittle you or I'm better than you, man. I'm I'm hoping I get saved, man. You know. <clears throat> so I'll just say this: What is faith? All right, faith is this is faith. Hebrews eleven and one. Um. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. What did the man just make a request of the Lord? He said, yo, speak the word and I know it's done. 
This man had faith. That's why the Lord said, I've never seen great faith in the whole of Israel, this man. Because he just said, look, man, you ain't going to come into my house. Other men, there's other um, accounts. They all came, the Lord came to his house. Some he just said, yo, it's done, it's done. But this man, he offered to come to the man's house. He said, nah, you ain't going to come. Just say the word and it's done. All right? Read this. And this even shows you a great to a great degree how deep this is. All right? This man has to be an Israelite, man. How have I forgot this scripture? I haven't been there in so long. Is it too? Yeah, 2 and 8, Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. This, this is just a stone cold. It's just like, it just tells you, ooh. For by grace are ye saved. We have grace in this time because why? We're under the first covenant still. But we're, on, we're it, you know, it's like a 1.0 of of the, the first covenant because now we have what? Grace through Yahweh Shai, which grace is... The fact that you do some wrong by by the mercy and grace of Yahushua is covered. It's, it's it's basically you know nullified and not not looked upon. All right. So it says, "For by grace are ye saved through faith." All right. So salvation, which is for Israel, all right, is done by the means of faith. Now let's see how you get faith, and that not of yourselves. You can't not faith ain't saying you just have. That I can just will into existence by my own means. It says it is the gift of the Most High. So it's a gift from the Heavenly Father. He bestows it upon you. All right? It comes falling from the heavens upon you. And you have the gift of faith. So I'll read this. Jump back to Hebrews 1 and read verse, verse 6. 11, sorry. Uh, let me just... <coughs> excuse me. It says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the most high must believe that he is, which pertains to his name, Yahweh, which his name is what is dreadful among the heathen, and that he is rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right? And that, that centurion diligently seeked of the Lord his son, which is the doorway to the most high power. So let's read on. <coughs> Verse 11. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Um, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. They shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Yahweh I said unto the centurion, Go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant and his servant was healed in the self same arm um hour. All right? There you go. There you go. So I wanna close out on this. Which builds upon everything that was said. <laughs> the Christian is special, man. Um John three, fifteen and sixteen. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish have eternal life for the most I so loved the world we know the word there from world is cosmos right Israel and this is why I open with the book of Isaiah 45 because it's the same this is the same script this is Yahweh Shai basically quoting that scripture all right so it says verse 16 for the most I so loved the world all right the world of Israel that he gave his only begotten son his son all right that whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that, that centurion's servant received life by means of what? His his master's faith, right? Which shows you that what? This man has what? A means. He, he's a point into salvation. I would believe he's a point into salvation, man. Right? That's it. So... Hey, the question was what yeah Apostle I put forth it's it's been said. Um and um yeah, the centurion, his servant, the Israel, because that bless all those blessings pertain to the children of Israel. And they received of it. Alright? So with that I pray we're edified to the next one. You know, say shalom. Shalom.